I've got a budget camera here, the Canon M50. This one's gonna run you about $650. I've got the Canon EOS R. This is a pro camera. It's what I use on all of my paid uh, professional photography work. That one's gonna run you about two and a half thousand dollars, but what's the difference? Welcome back to another Budget Wednesday. What is up creators, this is Tom, welcome back to another Budget Wednesday. If you don't know, this is the show where we go through a cheap filmmaking piece of equipment, gear, or some sort of tip that is going to level up your photography, videography game without spending any money. If that sounds like something you're going to be interested in, I will link the entire Budget Wednesday playlist down below in the description. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to be notified about future uploads. Without further ado though, let's just jump straight in. So guys, I have the Canon M50 here. This is a camera which I've been using for the last sort of couple of months or so. I've been making a lot of content about it here on the channel. And like I said, I've got the EOS R. So these are two cameras that are really different in terms of like price point, who might buy these types of cameras. They're definitely positioned at two different uh, sort of sides of the market. However, I do think that these types of comparisons are super useful because basically it allows you to see what you're getting when you pay for these more expensive pieces of equipment and also how good now these cheaper pieces of equipment are. Like you can get started with professional work with these smaller cameras now. So just how big is the difference between these two cameras? I also just picked up a couple of new lenses, which I'm super buzzed about. So this is the Canon, uh, this is just a massive lens, Canon um, 20, uh, 72 200 uh, millimeter f2.8. This is the second generation of this lens. And I've also picked up the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter. You can go see how wide this bad boy gets. But these are two lenses that I've been wanting to pick up for a long time. So what I decided to do is pack up the cameras, pack up these lenses, and just head out to an amazing photography location. <laughs> So this was called the Ooze Valley Viaduct. It's again, just an amazing photography spot near uh, where I live. Super exciting to shoot there. Uh, it was the first time I've done so. Just an, like an unbelievable view, unbelievably cool shots you can get at a venue like this. And like I said, I wanted to test out the lenses, but primarily we were there to test out the different cameras, the capabilities of each and what sort of differences and just sort of give you guys an overview of what the differences are between these two price points of cameras. You know, you could buy four, roughly four uh, can Canon M50s for the price of one EOS R. So it's, the difference is really substantial. So kicking off the list, we're going to talk about build quality, size, sort of ergonomics and feel of the camera. Now, I am not a fan of these little flimsy little cameras. Like, don't get me wrong, they can be amazing for things like traveling. And again, uh, maybe flimsy is a bit unfair because uh, this is quite a small camera, but it's relatively well built. Like it doesn't feel cheap in the hand. It is predominantly plastic, but the issue really that I have with it is the weight and the size. Like this is a small little camera, uh, as you can see. Uh, I would be wanting to put like a cage or something uh, to like beef it up a bit, add a bit of weight and a bit of feel to uh, the camera itself, or at least a battery get something to just add a bit more chunk to it. The EOS R on the other hand is like really nice. This is on the smaller side for a professional camera, but the actual ergonomics and the feel like the right hand grip is really good. Like it just feels like a professional piece of equipment. I think also briefly what we should talk about is the lenses options between the uh, EOS R and the uh, M50. So this uses an EFM mount and this uses an RF mount. So what I have on both of these systems is a lens adapter. This is the EF to EOS M mount. So if we can take this off, like this, and that is the EOS M mount there. And then the uh, EOS R similarly uses an RF mount. Now the RF lenses on the EOS R are supposed to be incredible. And likewise, I'm sure you can get fantastic results using the native EOS M lenses on the M50. I wanted to test these both using the same lenses to give you guys a good comparison between the two cameras. It's also because I own a bunch of EF glass. So I actually use these adapters all the time because 
because I use the uh, lenses that I have on here, on the camera right now, and also on uh, on here and this lens down here on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So that's sort of, you know, the, the setup that I have running. But yeah, on the whole, you can get really good glass for both camera systems, but EF, that's the sort of overarching Canon glass is like pretty much one of the best lens systems in existence. You can use both of these lenses and they have great uh, native performance. That brings us on to our next point, which is autofocus. So for the autofocusing test, what we decided to do is I just sort of walked into frame and we let the cameras track me, see that sort of when my face was recognized and then just allowed me to track me all the way up. My girlfriend had not done this sort of tracking shot before and I think she did a really good job. So that was massively appreciated. But basically, uh, as you can see, the uh, M50 was actually exceptionally quick. It was actually faster than the EOS R to actually track my face and start tracking my face moving towards the camera. What I would say though is that the EOS R was much more natural focus pull. I'm wondering whether that is something which Canon had thought about. Like it's a less mechanical sort of instant uh, focus detection and it looks almost like someone is pulling the focus on the EOS R. That is a nice feature but on the whole like the dual pixel focus on the EOS R and on the M50 just did super nice job tracking my face throughout the duration of this walk. And it's just a massive advantage to these Canon cameras. Like the M50, you're getting the same autofocusing system, the dual pixel autofocusing system uh, that you do in these much more expensive cameras. So that's unbelievably good in this small little form factor and for this low, low price. Just a very quick side note is that you don't get dual pixel autofocus in 4K. You still do have access to autofocus, but you don't have the sort of dual pixel, like really high quality quality autofocusing performance on the M50 in 4K. Okay, briefly, I want to talk about crops and frame size. So this is a good, like that shot we just talked about, that autofocusing shot is a good example because those were both filmed at 200 millimeters and you can see the difference in focal lengths between the EOS R and the M50. That is because the EOS R shoots in full frame and you have a wider field of view, whereas on the M50, everything is at a crop sensor because this is an APS-C crop sensor camera. You can see the sensor size in there is just a lot smaller than it would be on the EOS R. Personally, I'm not one of these people that just like absolutely loves the full frame look and thinks that a crop sensor is the worst thing on the planet. That's not true. Personally, I don't find that as much of an issue. The EOS R even shoots cropped 4K and it looks great. So, you know, there are pros and cons to each system, but on the whole, if you're wanting a full frame look, obviously the EOS R is the way to go. I briefly just mentioned it, but I also want to talk about frame rates, 4K, that type of thing on both cameras. And this one, I'm gonna to give to the uh, M50 by far and away because the M50 has decent selection of frame rates. Uh, it shoots in 4K, it shoots in 1080p at 60 frames a second, and it's pretty much identical to the EOS R. And I'm not gonna say that that's the EOS R doing it well. I would say that's the M50 doing a decent job with a decent selection of frame rates available. And the EOS R is kind of the big complaint that everyone had about this camera. is like doesn't have 120 frames a second at 1080p. It's, it, it's in 720p, which is just rubbish and not really usable. On the whole, it shoots really good 1080p at 60 frames a second and amazing 4K, but that's only at 24 uh, and 30 frames a second. But it's just on the whole, like the M50 does a good job with these frame rates and the EOS R is lagging behind just particularly for the price. Okay, now I wanna move on to C-Log, picture profiles, colors, that type of thing. And the EOS R just blows the M50 out of the water in this regard. And that's because you can shoot in what's called C-Log on the EOS R. This is a very flat picture profile. It means that you have a lot more flexibility. You can record more dynamic range and just have a better experience grading your colors in post. If you're just wanting something that looks great out of camera, you can shoot on the M50, but you're not going to have as much control in the edit as you would on the EOS R. Obviously, also on the EOS R, if you did want things to look great out of camera straight away, you can shoot on one of these sort of standard built-in picture profiles, but on the M50, you only have that option. A caveat to all of this is that with the M50, like there's a massive advantage that you just have access to Canon's cameras. Like that paired with the autofocusing system, you're getting two sort of industry leading features on this tiny little camera that's $650. You get great autofocus and you get amazing colors straight out of camera. Okay, now we're gonna talk about battery life and the EOS R is showing its strengths here. The EOS R's battery is just like way, way better than the M50s. Uh, I actually have shot, since I've bought this camera, I've shot maybe sort of five, six professional photography gigs where I've been shooting all day with the EOS R. I've only ever had to switch my battery out once. On the whole, the, the 
battery life sort of lasts for like between five or six hours. So that's really, really good for a camera like this. The M50 on the other hand lasts for about two hours of shooting less if I'm shooting video. So really, really not great in terms of battery life. If you're wanting longer battery life, I would recommend getting sort of a battery grip system or something like that, but definitely just stock up on the little M50 batteries. Okay, and finally we get on to the most important stuff and that is the photo quality and the video quality. Now, I think by far and away, the EOS R is closer to a professional photography camera than a professional videography camera, in my opinion, professional video camera. Like the video that you get out of the EOS R is great. It's amazing for online content, which is why I shoot all of my videos with this camera. But I still, for my professional work, shoot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera because it shoots 10 bit. The picture is just night and day compared to something like the EOS R. But the photos out of this camera are amazing. And it's for that reason that I actually bought the camera in the first place. The photography capabilities on the EOS R are really, really great, but they're also really great on the M50. I think if you are publishing specifically for online content, the M50 is actually just a really good choice for high quality video, really great pictures, you lose some of the ability to boost up your shadows and the sort of gain the real advantage of shooting high quality raw photos from a camera like this. Does shoot raw, just not amazing high quality raw files like the EOS R. So on the whole here, the photo and video quality out of the EOS R is better. We're all not going to be surprised by that fact. It's almost four times the price of this little camera. However, what you need to weigh up personally is if you are looking at buying uh, you know, a Canon M50 and thinking maybe should I stretch my budget to the EOS R, on the whole, you need to decide whether the quality bump in this video, like you can see the quality between the two different cameras, is it four times worth the price for you? You have the budget for the M50, is it worth spending almost four times the price on the upgrade to the EOS R? Personally, I think the footage out of the M50 looks surprisingly amazing for a camera of the price point like this. There we go guys, I think that finally wraps up uh, my thoughts and feelings on these two different cameras. Hopefully you have enjoyed some of the samples, looking at some of the footage that we shot. If you do have any questions, about any of this stuff, any of my new lenses, the new cameras, that type of thing. I'll be down with that answering as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.